ladies and gentlemen, boy, hang on, I'm in the, f uh, sorry about the music, I'm in this fucking radio station in the studio. Nah, I don't know how to, I don't know how to turn the, uh, the music off, because I'm in the studio at the desk, I don't know if you can see how many fucking buttons are at the desk, there's like 35 different buttons, I'm gonna attempt to, uh, turn the music off, I figured that, hey, if I fuck this up, I might as well film it, it <laughs> could be pretty funny. Hey, the Speared Sundays podcast could be going live to everyone in the country right now, but um, all right, I'm going to attempt to move move some knobs. That didn't do anything. Um, oh, oh, there it is. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 95 or 96 of the Spearhead Sunnies podcast. How was your week? Huh? It's Christmas in a couple days, isn't it? What is it? I'm recording this on Thursday. It's the 20, 20 once. Um, so you should hear this on the 23th, unless you're a Patreon cunt. Um, so yeah, Christmas is next week. Uh, yeah, I met, I missed an episode last week. I also missed videos and I didn't post anything. I'm going to tell you about that later in the podcast because it's a little bit depressing. I'm not going to get right into that now. But I wanted to uh, say that, yeah, fuck, I nailed Christmas this year, man. I fucking nailed it. Dude, there is no one in this country that did Christmas better than me. No one. Name anyone. Santa. Santa probably did Christmas better than me, but hey, the cunt invented it. Jesus, he died, or was he born? He was born, all right? But did he have anything to do with that? Huh? Did he? Actually, I think he had a lot to do with it, seeing as he kind of is God. That's what I don't get about the whole fucking Jesus thing, right? Is how is Jesus the son of God if he also is God, right? Because my understanding of it is it's the Father, it's the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the Father is the guy who sent Jesus down for a laugh to get killed and be like, ha ah. Just created anti-Semitism. <laughs> and then the son is Jesus who got stabbed in the in the ribs or whatever because he couldn't die quick enough. And then the Holy Spirit is uh, whatever black people do in church, right? That shit. The, oh, no, the, all, the, all that fucking hand waving and clapping. when Dude, their churches look so much better than mine. I remember watching movies and seeing black churches... And everyone's singing and having a great time and really loud. Everyone's like, oh, Jesus, clapping along, hanging out with each other. They actually want to be there. And then, I, and then I tried it when I was like fucking 14 or something. I went to church and it was boring. It sucked. Like, dude, white people youth group was shit. In our church, they have a basketball court. Didn't even use it. Why was it there? I can tell you if it was a fucking black church, that shit would be used every day. <laughs> Why am I yelling? Oh, yeah, Christmas. I nailed Christmas. No, I want to talk about Jesus. Fuck Christmas. All right? Everyone gets angry at me when I do this shit, but how the fuck is Jesus a son if he's really just a part of God, okay? And if he's a part of God... How did, he, how did those two bits, like the Holy Spirit is out of this theoretical conversation. It's, uh, you know, hanging out with black people while they scream in churches and faint and clap their hands, right? Having a sick time, Holy Spirit is over there, okay? But then we have Jesus, the Son and the Father, all right? These two bits of God. How did they decide who's the Father and who's the Son? Uh, how did that conversation go down? Because really, Jesus got a fucking shit deal, he had to give up all his powers, all his omnipotence. I wouldn't say yes to that. I'm for sure. I'm going the Father on this one, right? So there, those, there's these two sitting up in heaven, and uh, the Father is like, Oi, Oi, Jesus. No, his name's not Jesus yet because he hasn't been born because he's part of God because Mary and Joseph called him Jesus. So the Father would be like, Oi, Son. And then the Son would be like, Yeah. Father's like, I got a sick idea, man. Oh yeah, well you want to fuck with the humans? That do you want to fuck? You want to do something, huh? Make them believe in us? He's like, yeah, man, let's do this shit. Okay, how about this? All right, how about I'm gonna send you down to Earth? Wait, wait, wait. Why would I go to Earth? 
to terrorize them? Could I do all speak spooky tricks and like fly around? And No, no, no. You can't do any of that shit, right? Here's my idea. What we're going to do is just to fuck with the Jews, we're going to send you down and uh, they're going to kill you. And then the son's like, um, why? Uh, well, you see, the, uh, I don't know, I just want to fucking invent a new holiday, right? So we'll, they'll celebrate that when you're born. And then Jesus is like, okay, cool. We'll have a holiday when I'm born. Why do they have to kill me? Look, man, just fucking, just, just do it, right? I want to write a, the second half of my book, <laughs> and I need some inspiration. So could you just go down there and, you know, fuck with the Jews a little bit, have 13 friends, and then one of them will betray you, and, I don't know, Lady Gaga will sing a song about Judas, and everyone will be like, oh, you can't sing about that, it's Judas. Some cunt who betrayed Jesus 2,000 years ago. And then Jesus will be like, look, man, that's a shit idea. What do I get out of this? And then and then the father would be like, I don't know, fucking holiday? What do you want from me? What do you want from us? I'm party. I, I don't know where I'm going with this, to be honest, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know where I'm fucking going. <laughs> Why? Oh, yeah, Christmas, right? So, I nailed Christmas. I, f- I fucked Christmas uh, in the ass without consent. I organized all of my Christmas presents last week. Done. Finished. I spent thirty dollars on everyone except for my lovely girl. I spent thirty bucks on everyone. I got mum something good. I got my brother. I got my dad. Uh, I got my grandma. And then I went all out on my girlfriend. And I fucking nailed it. If she's if she doesn't like get surprised, I will kill myself. And there'll be no more podcasts ever. I nailed Christmas. All these people out there, go. I can see them. I'm looking out the window right now. I can see all these miserable cunts going to do Christmas shopping on the 21st. And they're all going to get to the same store looking for the same thing. And it'll all be jacked up prices and sold out. Dumb cunts. So what's been happening in the world? Uh, the universities are advertising. Every time high schools finish, all the universities start advertising. And fuck, university ads suck, don't they? Have you seen all, it's like all, all Melbourne Uni and Latrobe Uni and all, just every single university is putting up billboards and YouTube ads and all this fucking shit targeted at 18 year olds who don't even know what they want to do with their life. They just got their fucking ATAR, they don't even realize it doesn't matter yet and all these universities are taking advantage of of people's lack of purpose in the world and how much they're freaking out about that. They're taking advantage of the pressure that parents put on their kids to go to uni for no reason other than to please them. And they put in their fucking billboard ads, they go, think different. Or change the world. Think outside the box. That's my favorite one. I think it was was one of the big universities, their giant marketing campaign is, is... essentially think outside the box whatever university man university is about as inside the box as you can fucking get like how how much further into the into the pre-planned fucking life path that the rest of the world has built for people who don't know what they want to do can you get you can't get any deeper into a fucking box than going to university for no reason and look i'm not here to trash higher education I'm just trashing higher education if you don't have a fucking reason to do it. Like, if you want to be a doctor, not because your parents are Asian, but because you actually want to do it, if you really want to be a dentist, right? Here's here's a test of whether you want to be a dentist or your parents want you to be a dentist, okay? Have you been playing six hours of piano every night since you were three? If the answer is no, maybe you do want to be a doctor. If the answer is yes, it's probably just because you have Asian parents. <laughs> no, but like if you want to be a doctor or if you want to be a specific kind of scientist, then yeah, your ATAR probably matters and so does going to university because you can't become a doctor unless you have a uni degree. Like uh, I could be an entrepreneur start up a sock business, I don't need a degree, but you can't really start up a, a dentist office and call yourself an entrepreneur. Be like, oh, I'm self-taught, man. 
<laughs> I came from nothing, taught myself how to be a dentist. You just be fucking up people's mouths and the government's going to come down on that. So you do need a degree for some things, but only go to uni if you know that you want to go to uni. And if you do go to uni and you've been there for a year and you're like, man, this sucks. Can't wait for this to be over. Just stop. You don't have to finish it. Finishing it just means that you end up with more fucking debt and you have to start working in a career to pay off that debt and you're in a field that you don't like. It's not the best life choice. I did... I did... uh what did I do? I did I did a fucking uh, uni course for music production. And I was there for about a month and I was surrounded by DJs. Well, people who wanted to be DJs but who didn't have the drive to just fucking DJ in their garage until they were good. And I remember sitting in class every single day listening to the teacher who knew his shit and but then being surrounded by fucking drop kicks in sma- in snapbacks and singlets putting out their shitty fucking Will Sparks bangers that would have been good maybe in 2011 and being like, why the fuck am I in a university course for what is essentially a hobby? That'd be like me going to uni to tell dick jokes. You don't need to do that. Just fucking tell them you'll be shit and the audience will let you know by not laughing. You don't need to study a course on... Although, you know what, I think short courses are super useful as long as you do your research and you've seen other people do them. I think like a six-week course on just about anything is, is super useful but because you can learn just that one thing. Like I want to do a six-week short course on how to use a specific music production software and the hardware that comes with it. That, uh, that, I've been looking at that for ages. I'm thinking about doing it next year and, and that looks awesome because you just do it once a week for six weeks. You get in, you get out, you're not in fucking debt. You just pay a thousand dollars or however much it costs and then you learn the thing and then you fucking leave. And you don't have some piece of paper that was printed on, you know, three ply document sheets that you have to frame and every time you look at it, you go, oh yeah, my degree. I'm not doing anything with that, am I? Fuck, the frame was expensive. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, what I'm saying, guys, is just do what you want to do and go on a fucking gap year. If you don't know what you're doing with your life, do a gap year. And it's not even... It's just getting life experience. I don't think I realized how much I needed to do comedy until I had a full-time job. And I was like, holy shit, this is awful. Awful. The only reason I can bear coming into this radio station every day is because, you know, I get to tell dick jokes without actually saying dick every day. I mean, that's, like, that's, the, it's, it's doing comedy. But if I had to come to the radio station and do one of the office jobs here, like sales or admin, for sure I'd be jumping off the world famous rooftop. You know, that's what they call it at the radio station, the fucking rooftop. They call it the world famous rooftop. <laughs> Do you reckon you can go down to Tibet, climb a mountain, and be like, oh, have you heard of the rooftop in Melbourne? You know, Justin Bieber's played on it once. Yeah, it's world famous. And some Tibetan smoking a fucking pipe, trying to usher white people up the mountain while his family starves to death because they're not paying him enough. He goes, oh, yeah, that rooftop. (laughs) Oh, man. Speaking of comedy, did you see that Kevin Hart got in trouble uh, for being sexist? Kevin Hart, one of the most PC comedians working today, uh, also one of the hardest working guys. He hosted Saturday Night Live, that sketch show. He had a monologue and he had a... Oh, it was, oh it's just poetic. This whole thing is just fucking poetic. He had uh, a joke about how, because he's a dad, he's talking about being a dad. So he's not... A, anyway... Cut to the cut to the chase. Women are angry about it because who the fuck else would be, right? Um, so he's doing this bit about being a dad and how he gets to be the fun. Dads are fun. Mums aren't fun, right? And being fun, that's a responsibility all in itself. Now, this is Kevin Hart speaking on his own experiences as a father. This is the guy that does about 35,000 movies every year while he's touring and doing ads and running like 15 different businesses and also he's on TV somehow. I don't know when the cunt sleeps. 
He's either doesn't sleep, he's got clones, or he just lives off cocaine and protein shakes. I don't know how he does it, but he does it, and his work ethic is incredibly inspiring to me, right? So he's doing this bit about how dads are fun, mums are not. Classic bit. It was pretty funny. I liked it. And it was also about him. Like, the responsibility of being fun is a lot of, of shit. And of course... Women got angry at that shit. They're like, how dare you say? And it's just great. Like, women are, women are yelling about a joke, calling them not fun, and they've taken it seriously. <laughs> like, way to fucking prove his point. They've gone, um, excuse me, this isn't funny. Because I, as a woman, I can tell you that I am a lot of fun, and I'm going to prove that by telling you that this joke is not funny. It's like... Man, hilarious shit. Um, yeah, so I want to apologize. I haven't been posting uh, anywhere uh, for about a week and a half. I missed a podcast. I missed a video. I, I, I hate that this happened fucking like right. I dropped a Lure review and I was really happy with it. And, and I was so ready to do weekly videos. And uh, I, I was, everything was lined up. And then my, uh, my grand died. Um, and it was, it was, it really fucked up the whole family. Um, she's, she had, uh, I remember I spoke to her on the phone. I was so glad that I got this, um, got to do this. I spoke to her on the phone for like 15 minutes, a really long time after she had a stroke. So she had one stroke and then she was in rehab and she was recovering. I think it was her second stroke. She's 80 years old. So she was quite old. And I spoke to her on the phone for ages, for 15 minutes, just about, you know, the comedy special. I hadn't talk, talked to her a while. So I talked about, you know, I did the special and, and we got the radio show. And, you know, she's really proud of me. I had this great, really, really good conversation. And um, uh, I, uh, I promised that I would show her my comedy special. Um, and I had, I had a rough cut of it. I have just one angle and I, I was... Um, I was going to wait until it was all edited so I could show her the finished version. Um, but then she ended up, she had another stroke uh, and she ended up, it took out like 70% of her, of her brain function. I'm sorry that this is, this is just taking a real fucking <laughs> dark turn on the podcast, but she lost 70% um, of her, her brain function. Um, and the doctors to just told us that she wasn't going to make it. Um, so that fucked it. That fucked up the whole family. It's just before Christmas, and then we went in to the hospital to see her, and that was really good to do. We got to see her, um, and they 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 told us, you know, there was nothing that we could do, and it was just to say goodbye. So we got to talk to her, and um, you know, we got to say goodbye. She was there, and it was just the weirdest thing, man. Like she was, she, like seeing her in the. It's the. This is the first person close to me that has died ever I've never experienced that before no one even in like my secondary circle has died or, or anything I've never experienced it before but so we go into the hospital and, and she's there she's laying in the bed and, and she's there but she's not uh, you know what I mean like her body's there but she's gone um and uh we talk to her for a little bit it's like you know you don't know if she can hear you but it's it's just good to get it out so um, we, we were around her and we were talking to her and I was really cut up that I didn't get to see, that she never got to see my comedy special. Um, but, uh, you know, we got to say goodbye and, uh, I got to give her a hug and, um, the doctors basically told us because, I mean, it's really fucked up because I think euthanasia just got passed in Australia. You can, you can, uh, euthanize people but but it's not legal yet so it's just passed in the parliament and when i was reading about this this voluntary euthanasia stuff so you can say and you will you know if i ever lose my brain function euthanize me to take me out peacefully rather than leaving me in a bed with no function and feeding me for a tube until i die of old, old age so people can choose to do that and i was always so on i was so on the fence about it i didn't know if we should if that should be an option, if we should be able to just kill people like that, well, it's not, you know, put, well, put, essentially put people down, but man, seeing her in, in the hospital like that, 30 seconds into it, I was like, man, they're, they're, 
I'm so happy that it's passed and I'm and I was shattered that it wasn't there for her because what they had to do is because it wasn't legal and she's not conscious and she's not there all they can do is just um take out her her tubes to that was that was feeding her and uh load her up with morphine and just let her sit there for three days until she starves to death that's what that's how they've been doing it i didn't know this that's how they've been dealing with stroke victims who are never going to come back and it's really fucked up um but uh yeah it just it just messed with me because it's weird because because they're they're there but they're not there so it was this really weird process where we went in and we saw gran and uh you you come to terms with it and you try and say goodbye and you try and you know start the grieving process but she's not gone so it was like three days after we we went into the hospital she I came home from the radio show um, and uh, and dad told me she was gone. This was yesterday. Uh, yeah, it was yesterday. She passed away. Um, so now it's now it's real. You know, now it's it's hit me and, and I wanted to do this podcast because I didn't want to fucking leave you guys hanging. It's such a shitty time for it to happen. But, you know, in in, in terms of, of going, it's the best way that any, anyone could go other than the, the euthanasia stuff. She was surrounded by a family everyone got to say goodbye to her. I think about 30 people visited her. I think that's probably why she went. She was fucking sick of everyone crying around her. Um, but yeah, I got to, I got to see her and, uh, I apologized that I never showed her my special and, um, yeah, I don't, I just, I just gave her a kiss and I told her that I was going to make it because she was always really obsessed with that. And I'm sorry (laughs) that I'm cracking up a little bit, but it's still very, um, it's still very raw. So, um, that's why I I told you I was going to be weekly and putting out videos, but I missed it. It's because of that. Um, if you give me a second, I'm just going to pause the camera and I'm going to come back and we're going to do some funny shit. But um, if there was anything that I could recommend to you guys around Christmas time, it's fucking hug your family members because, <laughs> sorry, hug your family members because you don't know when they're going to go. Um, and I'm so glad that I got to talk to her. And uh, I'm really, I'm really upset she never got to see the comedy special because she really wanted to see it. But um, yeah, enjoy Christmas with your families because it's so important. I'm going to take a quick little break and I'm going to come back less of a bitch. <laughs> All right, give me a second. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. That was a little bit of a fucking letdown in the middle <laughs> of the podcast, wasn't it? I'm, I'm back. I'm wearing a pink hoodie. I feel really comfy. I feel really emotionally supported, and I'm ready to, to tell some fucking. I don't know, talk some shit, essentially. Uh, dude, I have been, oh man, I've been, I've been, uh, trying to buy a phone case for the longest time for my, uh, iPhone. I got the iPhone 6S plus division minus whatever the fucking symbol. I don't know. I have a phone. I don't care what it is. All I cared at the time was, does it take photos and does it have heaps of storage? I get the big ones. Because I remember one time I made the mistake of buying the fucking 32 gig thing and then I ran out of space in 10 minutes and it just sucked. I just had to buy a new phone or delete all of my shit. So now I'm, I'm strictly 128 gig for life, uh, yo. Um, anyway, so I've been trying to get this fucking phone case because I had a, when I bought the phone, I just went to uh, Kogan and I got a literally a $1.50 clear phone case. And uh, it was absolutely perfect. Uh, but then it started to grow mold on it. It started to get really moldy for some reason. And uh, I actually think it... it uh, uh, It's gross. I'm not even going to say that. But <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not going to say that. I thought about saying it again. Not going to say it. Um, it was yeah, It's just too gross. You would all turn off. Yeah, so I had this shitty phone case and it grew mold on it. So I got rid of it. And then I bought uh, another phone case from ebay this is like uh i had the phone for maybe two years i think i've had this phone for and then i had the phone case for two years i threw it out and then just last month i bought a new one oh this black one from ebay i was like you know what i'm not gonna cheap out this time i'm not gonna spend a dollar fifty on the phone case and then be surprised when it's shit 
I am going to go all out. And I spent uh, $8 on this phone case, a black one. So, you know, that's at least eight times more expensive, a little bit more than eight times more expensive. I get it. And uh, surprise, surprise, it's a piece of shit. It was made out of this material that I, I didn't want to touch my phone. It actually made me use my phone way less. Uh, and it was just like shitty, thin plastic. It wasn't going to protect it at all. So I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. I throw that in the bin. I'm like, you know what? Fine. I'll just go and I'll get one of those things from those fucking stores that are in the middle of shopping centers. And I'll just go all out. I'll spend money and I'll get something good. I went to one of these, uh, you know, those, those fucking shops that pop up in the middle of shopping centers. Like they're not a store. They're just some stall. And they're there pretending to be a shop. You know them, and everyone, everybody working there is just bored out of their minds, praying for someone to walk in and look at their shit so they can try and sell it to them. Like, they're there just pretending the internet doesn't exist. They're always selling something shit, like some fucking minion toy that has a motor on its head so it can kind of hover. That's not even a joke. I literally saw that the other day, and I wanted to get the guy who was playing with it and just grab him by the t-shirt and the seat of his, like, grab his belt from behind and the top of his t-shirt and then just fucking heave-ho him off the ledge all the way down to ground level from level three. It just sucked. But anyway, this other joint, phone cases, it's selling. So I go up to the cunt and I go, hey, I want a clear phone case. And he's like, oh, you sure you don't want with flames on it? I said, no, I want one with clear. I, so see-through, I don't want a fucking brand on it. I just want it to look like my phone, but it's protected. He gives me this phone case and he's like, and I go, all right, fine, perfect. How much is it? He's like, $70. What? $70 for a fucking phone case? No. And I just walked away. And he's like, oh, no, it's on special. It's on special. I was messing with you. And, I, and then he goes, it's $50. And I was like, oh, $50. And at this point, I was still going to walk away. But then I put my phone in my pocket and I felt the disgusting, shitty plastic that it was covered in that covered my phone that I currently had it. And I was like, you know what? I would rather spend $50 now than spend 20 bucks online and I have to use Google and, and still think about it. So I'm like, fine, fuck it. And I buy the, I buy it. So I'm like, yeah, give me the phone case, you scam artist. And he gives me the phone case and I pay for it. No, hang on, before I pay for it, he takes it to the counter, he scans it, and he goes, all right, what's your phone number? It's like, I'm sorry? It's what's your phone number? I'm like, <laughs> I, uh, I think you're, I think you're uh, misunderstanding. I'm here to buy a phone case. I am not here to give you my fucking date of birth and my phone case and my phone number. And he goes, "Oh, I just need your phone number." And I'm like, "Why?" And he goes, "Oh, I just need it for our system for your warranty." I'm like, "Oh, okay, my phone case warranty. Who the fuck has ever broken a phone phone case?" Ever. I've never seen a broken phone case. Like, sure, you'll throw your phone around in the case the phone might break, but I know for sure that warranty isn't going to protect my phone. It's going to protect the phone case. So if I drop my phone with enough force to break the fucking case, I would have to drop it off a 100-story building. It hit the ground and, like, sink into the middle of the of earth, into the molten core, and then burn up, I could go to your fucking store and be like, hey, I broke my phone, but uh, I don't, <laughs> like, dude, my phone doesn't work anymore, and my phone is so destroyed that it wrecked the phone case, what am I going to do with a brand new phone case? I'm like, cool, now I have an empty phone case and a phone that's too fucked that it doesn't even fit in it. So I'm like, no, I'm not giving you my number. Which I've just recently decided to do. I am not giving my phone number out anymore. I'm not doing it to any stores. I'll, here's, here's who I'll give my phone number to. I'll give it to the bank. I'll give it to... Uh, who else? That's it. The bank and, you know what, my phone provider. Those are the only two people in my fucking life that need to know my phone number when I'm paying them for a service. It's like, yeah, okay, cool. I have $50. I give you the money. You give me the phone case. That's it. I don't even need a fucking receipt. I don't. I don't need a receipt. I don't even want you to say thank you for shopping at whatever the fuck phone case. You're not going to get my phone number. And he keeps pushing me for it. And I'm like, fine. 
I'll give him my phone number. And I give him the phone number and I change the last digit and I've been changing it to the same number. And I'm pretty sure that that phone number exists. And there must be some cunt out there, some poor old lady that keeps getting calls every single day from people that are looking for Lewis, trying to sell Lewis shit. But I'm sorry, telemarketers, Lewis doesn't give out his fucking phone number anymore. I've had enough. Because I used to do that shit. And then I used to get telemarketers calling me, trying to get me to go to these fucking conferences. And I had no idea what the conference was about. And I would tell them every time they called me, Take me off your fucking list. Because what is this phone case company going to do with my phone number? What, you think they're going to store it away and be like, oh, I'm glad we have this just in case Lewis breaks his phone case. Then we can give him his money back. That's a good idea. No, they're going to sell it. And they're going to be like, hey, so this is Lewis. He's this, he's this old. He lives in this area. This is his phone number. And this is the kind of phone that he has. And then next minute, at the front of my house, there's going to be a fucking store with Apple paraphernalia out the front trying to get me to buy charges for my iPhone 6S Plus. And I'll be like, how the fuck do you know what kind of phone I have? And they'll be like, oh, you know that kiosk where you bought a phone three years ago? Yeah, they sold us your information. You're fucked. So anyway, I give this guy my fake phone number. And he's like, cool, brilliant. I just need your date of birth. I was like, fuck, why? He goes, oh, for the warranty. And I said, why do I need a warranty (laughs) for my phone case? And he couldn't answer me. And I was like, can I just do it without the warranty? And he's like, oh, the system, the system won't let me put it through unless I can give you a warranty. And I said, well, how about you put it through the system and say that I've agreed to a warranty and then I can fucking leave. And anyway, he wouldn't give it to me so I just gave him a whole bunch of fake information. It's just the shittest thing. Why do all these fucking businesses want to know my date of birth, my phone number, where I live and how long my dick is? It's, it's stupid. You don't need it. Also, who the fuck is lining up for chicken? <laughs> That's what I really want to get to today. Who the fuck lines up for chicken? In Melbourne City, I don't know if this is in any other city, but in Melbourne, it's it's a phenomenon. All of these fucking Asian chicken shops have lines around the corner, 30 deep of people wanting to get chicken. And every time I pass one, I think, who the fuck lines up for chicken? Who? Who goes to the city for food? You don't go to the city for food. There's no restaurants. It's just McDonald's and bars and fucking shops that close at nine. Who's going to get chicken in the city? I don't understand why anyone would fucking line up so they can get chicken. I thought that these places must have been incredibly unique chicken shops. I... I see this line of 30 deep, and I go, all right, I'm going to check this place out. I'm going to see what they're selling. So I push in front of the line uh, so I can see the menu. Don't worry, I didn't order anything. I'm not that much of a cunt. Well, I didn't have to push in. I just stood next to the line. I looked over the top of people's heads because I'm that big, right? Look at the menu, and I'm thinking, all right, it's an Asian chicken place. I can tell by all the amount of Asian people standing outside the fucking shop and, you know, the writing on the wall. Looks pretty Asian to me. And so it must be some weird Asian chicken delicacy that must be really nice and really unique. I look at the menu. It's just chicken schnitzel on a fucking stick. Who the fuck is lining up for chicken on a stick? It's on a stick. Who the fuck wants wood in their chicken? You can't improve chicken schnitzel that much that you, that it's so good people should line up for it. I'm sorry. You can't improve that. It's done. We made it, right? Get some chicken. You put some bread on it. You put some egg on it. You cook it. You're done. Doesn't get any better than that. I'm sorry. No one's going to innovate that to the point where it changes miraculously. It's like fucking pasta and meatballs. Nobody can make that better than me. I've never been to a restaurant and been like, oh yeah, this is better than my meatballs. No, because they didn't put enough cheese in it. They didn't put enough, so much cheese in there that I start 
to have a heart attack. Not as good as my meatballs. And nobody can make chicken schnitzel better than the other than the, than the other people who make good chicken schnitzel. Like, there's a point. It's like the Olympics now. No one's any faster than Usain Bolt. They just have faster reaction time. At this point, the next guy who beats Usain Bolt is not going to beat his record because he's a better runner. He's going to beat it because he was faster at starting from the gun. Because it'll be like half a millisecond that'll beat the world record. That's where we're at with chicken schnitzel. I don't care if you're the Usain Bolt of chicken schnitzel. I can guarantee you there's 30 of those in this city alone. And they all taste as good as each other. Not once have I thought, fuck, you know what would be good? You know what would really make this chicken schnitzel worth lining up for? If I put a stick in it. <laughs> That's the only difference. You know what? I reckon people are so stupid. They see a line and they go, you know what? Other people are lining up for it. It must be good. That's horseshit. Lining up for chicken. Who the fuck lines up for chicken? Uh, I'm going to talk about one more thing and then we're going to get a miscellaneous bit at the end. Um, man, I had the weirdest interaction with one of you cunts uh, the other day. Last week I was doing Christmas shopping. I was, I was knocking out all of my Christmas shopping. Oh, actually, I've got two things. I've got the weirdest one of you I've ever met and one of the sickest cunts I've ever met, right? Doing my Christmas shopping. And I thought, hey, I've had a pretty good year, right? I've done some pretty cool things. I think your boy, Lewis, deserves a bit of a Christmas gift gifted from himself. Had a bit of a shitty week. Why don't I distract from the emotional sadness of my shitty week by buying something that I don't need? Perfect. I'm not going to talk about my feelings. I'm going to I'm going to plug that hole with some fucking shit I don't need, which and you know what? It felt great. I was like, I'm going to buy myself a 3DS. I want the 3DS XL. Cuz I want to play as the 23-year-old man I am, sitting here, talking to you, yelling to a camera, into a mic, by myself, a 23-year-old adult male wearing a hot pink hoodie, I am the kind of guy who has the confidence to be like, you know what, I'm 23 years old, and you know what I'm going to buy, you know what I want to do with my fucking life? I want to buy a 3DS just so I can play Super Mario 3D Land. Because I saw the trailer two days before I went out and bought it. And I fucking impulsed the shit out of it. So I go to EB Games. Notorious for their cheap deals, right? I went to the, the biggest rip-off shop on the planet. I go to EB Games. And uh, I walk into the store, I start looking at the 3DSs. They had this, um, and they had three different deals with it. They had a 3DS. This is, now this is how fucking stupid I am. I'm like, well, if I'm going to buy something, I should buy the most expensive version with the least value for money. Right? So I get in there, and there's three different deals. You can either get the 3DS, uh... Oh, no, there was two different deals, right? I can get the 3DS for $250, just a regular version. And it came with two free games. Just a normal black version. Two free games, $250. Both of them really good games. Or I could get the brand new version, which was a which was a themed 3DS that looked like a Nintendo SNES controller. A console that I have never owned. That I was maybe five when people stopped playing with it. But I saw that and it was $250 and it came with no games. But fucking idiot me was like, oh... It's got slightly cooler colors because it's retro from a generation of consoles that I never owned or played. 
and it says special edition in the bottom left hand corner. It must be better. <laughs> so I'm like, I want that version. And then I will buy the games that I want. And that would have been about at least $300. And then as I'm making this incredibly stupid decision, uh, a fan comes up to me. He goes, hey, man, he works there. He goes, I, I, man, I really like your stuff. I'm like, cool, bro. Appreciate it. He goes, I've seen a few shows of yours and they're awesome. I'm like, cool. Thank you very much. Awesome. Then he walked away and left me to make my horrible decision. Anyway, I'm like, I want the, the more expensive one that gets less shit because it's a slightly cooler color, even though it doesn't relate to my life at all. And I go and I line up and I get to the counter and it's really busy because it's Christmas time. And the, and the fan, he's at the counter, but he doesn't serve me. Some chick serves me. She's standing next to me. And I'm like, hello, I would like to make a bad decision. I want the more expensive one with the version where you get less shit. And she goes, oh, sorry, we're sold out of that version. I was like, fuck, there's too many other people in this planet who make shitty decisions just because it has special edition written on the box. So I'm like, all right, fine, I'll get the uh, other edition. And then she goes out to the back and she goes and she gets it. And then the fan, the mad cunt, he, without saying a word, he doesn't say anything to me. He doesn't even look me in the eyes. He gets off his computer, stops serving his customer, jumps onto her computer, furiously types a whole bunch of shit. I don't know what he was doing. And then he doesn't say a word to me and then jumps back on his computer. Then the girl comes with the 3DS um, and she scans it. It doesn't come with any games. Um, or so I thought. And it was supposed to be $250. Then I'm like, oh, I also want this Super Mario 3D Land because I'm 23 and I have the mind of a 10-year-old. She goes, cool, and she scans it. Um, then she looks at her screen. She goes, oh, hang on. You, you, you get these two games for free as well. And I was like, oh, okay. And then she goes back to the counter and she gets two more games out and she gives them to me. I'm like, oh, how much are they? She goes, oh, no, it's free. It's part of the deal. And I was like, oh, all righty then cool and then she goes all right that'll be two hundred dollars and i'm like hang on a second my in my brain i'm like wait a minute if i get a console for 250 dollars and the super mario land is all oh, 50 dollars this should cost 300 dollars and then i'm getting two other games this should cost four hundred dollars and she's like, that'll be $200. And I'm like, play it cool, Louie. I think this guy's hooked me up with a bit of the staff discount. And I give her my card and I look her in the eyes and I'm like, I'm meant to pay for this, this price. And then she scans it and I put my pin in and she goes, all right, here's your receipt. And I go, thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs> and I walk out. And the guy looks at me and I look at the guy and I just give him the nod like, you're a fucking mad cunt. Mad cunt you are. And I walk out and I look at the receipt and he hooked me the fuck up. Oh man, he hooked me up, right? I look at the receipt. I got two games for free and a digital download of another game for free. I got... Yo-Kai Watch, a game I've never heard of. Probably never, probably not even gonna fucking play that thing. I got a digital download of Metroid Prime for free. Sick cunt. I noticed that was part of a deal if you bought a special edition of a 3DS that came out three months ago that is now not even in stock anywhere in the country. But that promo code must have been sitting somewhere on the computer and he just applied it. He just hooked me up with everything. And then I got... Super Mario 3D Land, there was some weird discount that was like 90% off. I got that for like $5. And then I got the console, which should have been $250 by itself, for like $150 because he applied some other discount. I tallied up all of the shit that I got. I should have paid about $450. And I walked out of there with just paying $200 because of that absolute mad cunt. And I can tell that you were definitely not supposed to do that. And I fucking appreciate you, man. Absolute legend. And that's when I walked in to the weird cunt. <laughs> uh, he wasn't that weird. He just really confused me. So after I walk out of EB Games, this guy comes up to me and he goes, 
<laughs> I'll, I'll just I'll just t- I'll just tell you exactly how our interaction went. So I'm going out and reading my receipt, being like, "Fuck, this guy hooked me up." This other dude walks up to me. He goes, "Hey, man, uh, you're Lewis Spears, yeah?" I'm like, "Yeah." And he goes, "Oh, dude, I love your stuff. I've been to a bunch of your shows. You're great." I'm like, "Hey, thanks, man." And then he, <laughs> he goes, "Hey." do you want me to take a photo for your page? And I was like, a f- uh, what do you mean a photo for my page? And he goes, you know, like a photo for your page. You spot, spot nebs. And I was like, oh, oh, you don't know how that works. <laughs> I, I didn't say that to him. I was like, oh, the, the spot nebs thing is where people take photos of me when I'm in public and they don't say hi. You can't come up to me and then ask me if you want to do it. For s- That's not how that works. That's not the joke. And he's like, come on, we'll do it. We'll do a selfie, yeah? And I was like, okay. And then he takes a selfie with me. And then he's like, all right, where do you want me to send that? And I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, for your, for your page, for your spot, you know, spot nebs. I'm like, uh, um, I don't know, on Snapchat, I guess. And then... <laughs> and then he goes, cool, man, thank you. And then he walks away. And then 10 minutes later, I get a Snapchat of the fucking selfie. So already, he's fucked it up so hard. He's trying to do the spot nebs joke, which is you take a photo of me in public when I don't know you're there. It's just me doing shit. That's the joke instead of getting a selfie. But instead, he walks up to me, asks me if he can do the spot nebs, and then he takes a selfie with me. So he's fucked that up, and then I open the photo that he sent me, and it's a selfie of us, and he's captioned it, Spot Benz, B-E-N-Z. He's fucking spelled it wrong. You couldn't have fucked that up any harder, man. One, it's a selfie. Two, I know you're doing it. Three, you spelled Nebs wrong. Four, you sent it to me, Spot Benz. You couldn't have messed that up any harder, but you know, shout out to the, shout out to those two guys. <laughs> All right, shall we get into um, the worst part of the podcast? Oh man, I've been hanging out in a hospital watching my grand die for the last week, and I still was like, "Wow, at least I'm not doing miscellaneous bit at the end." <laughs> oh, sorry about that, Grand. Ah, uh, sh- uh, she probably laughed. All right. Um, <laughs> we've got a, uh, um, where are we? I got an email, potentially the final update about this whole saga of this guy, well, this mate who's trying to pick up for his friend because they saw a cute girl at my special, my comedy special taping, all right? So, we've been hearing from, uh, Matt's friend sending in emails on behalf of Matt asking if he could get in contact with Claire, um, the girl. When we, we managed, Claire emailed in. She sent an email. She seemed uh, not interested in Matt particularly, but maybe interested in finding out who he is. So, Claire, if you're listening, this is who Matt is. He's finally emailed in. And uh, you might be, uh, yeah, I guess you might be pleasantly surprised or disappointed, depending on your taste. Uh, I'm the, the, e- the subject of the email is, I'm Matt. I uh, just want to clear a few things up. So he's coming in no nonsense, Claire. He's a fucking nonsense guy. I uh, just want to clear a few things up. I was not drinking, and I was also not wearing the Thought Patrol top. Both of those were Daniel. That's his friend. <laughs> so, so you know, this guy's got shitty friends who walk around drinking uh, outside of theaters wearing Thought Patrol tops. So you better watch out there. Uh, you exit, blah, blah, blah. Uh, anyway, here's... What happened without me sounding like too much of a weird stalker? Might be a bit late for that, but oh well. I did see Claire a few times that night, and I noticed that she was very pretty. I actively fought against the idea that Daniel had to send the email in the first place, and then when he sent me a message on Sunday telling me to listen to the podcast, I already knew what the fuck was up. Okay, so this guy just did it, and you didn't ask him to. I too sat in my bed listening to you and your girlfriend talk shit on me, which had me losing it. But fuck it, I'm an opportunistic guy, and because Claire is curious, here's my Facebook. And he gave me the link. I'll keep you posted. Have a good one, cunt. <laughs> All right, well, Matt, I will uh, send that link of your Facebook to Claire, and uh, you guys can do whatever you want with that. Keep me in the loop, and I don't know, this might be the first fucking 
podcast arranged marriage. <laughs> make sure you make her wear a burka, mate. And don't let her drive either. Uh, all right, last email, then I'm going to wrap this shit up. What fucking time is it? Oh, dude, I'm leaving early today. I've normally been leaving the radio station at 9 p.m., despite finishing it at fucking 2. Um, this one was entitled Accidental Slut, so you know it's going to be a good one. Uh, hey, Lewis. Firstly, you're an absolute sick cunt, blah, 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 love your stuff. I just haven't been to a show. Firstly, you're an absolute sick cunt. I love all your stuff. I just haven't been to a show. Well, well, do you love all my stuff? Do you really? Do you really love all my stuff? Because you haven't seen a show, so I say you love most of my stuff. You just haven't seen the best stuff. It's like, look, I love, I love... All of the stuff that you put out for free, but the good stuff you charge for, now nah, fuck that. that. That's what that that should have said. It should, hey, I'll just I'll just rewrite this for you. Hey, Lewis. Firstly, you're an absolute sick cunt. I love ninety percent of your stuff. I just don't want to pay for anything. <laughs> that's what you really mean. Um, all right. <laughs> for my for my question, um. All right, my name's Lexa. All right, Lexa. Accidental slut, name's Lexa. It's not boding well for you. You haven't even read the story. <laughs> if your name's Lexa, I don't know. You probably could be there because that's... Uh... Look, I'm not saying it's a whore's name. I'm just saying if I was at a strip club and the announcer was like, and coming to the stage is Lexa, I wouldn't be like, gee, that's a strange name for a stripper. <laughs> All right. Uh, call, my name's Lexa. So, I was at a friend's 21st. I got pissed, of course, and I was having a great time. Later in the night, when everyone started passing out... Oops, sorry, that's my phone going off. Shut up. Stop texting me. Um, later in the night, when everyone started passing out, I was talking to this guy called Tom, and then we fucked. And, <laughs> and then in brackets, yes, at my friend's place, because I have no respect. Well, at least you know, Lexa. Um... Anyway, next day, while Tom was asleep, I started talking to this other guy, Ben. Is this the same night? Oh, next day. I'm a fucking idiot. I just read that. Anyway, the next day. Wait, when was this happening? Fuckhead. Anyway, next day, while Tom was asleep, I started talking to this other guy called Ben. I was hanging around waiting for Tom to wake up so I could talk to him. Backstory, I've known him as an acquaintance for a couple of years, but nothing had ever happened beyond that because... I needed to know if that was a one-off or what was going on. All right, so you fucked like an acquaintance and uh, you needed to know, hey, uh, dick was pretty good, uh, uh, but I'm going to need like a, you know, is this a regular dick or is this just a one-off dick? Because I need to know, which I can respect. I mean, if you get some good dick, you got to hold on to it. Um, I kept talking to Ben until 2.30 in the afternoon before I gave up on waiting for Tom and I went home. However, I'd already gotten Ben's Snapchat and we became friends on Facebook. Here we go. Here's the accidental slut. Oops, I accidentally fell onto his dick. <laughs> Oops, I accidentally sell- sent him a picture of me rubbing my pussy. Oh, I slipped and sent him a nude. Fuck. Hate it when that happens. Hashtag accident. Um, I kept talking to Ben until 2.30 in the afternoon before I gave up on waiting for Tom and I fucked off home. However, I'd already gotten Ben's Snapchat and we became friends on Facebook. When I got home, I added Tom on Facebook. We talked about random shit for a bit, but neither one of us mentioned the sex. Ah, see, Tom's just fucked up. He should have followed up with it. Fast forward two weeks later and I go to a party with Ben and Tom is there too. I didn't know he was going to be there, but I kept my cool. Ben gets drunk and starts getting cuddly and weird, so I took him and his mates back to their friend, their their place. I was very drunk. I stayed there for a bit, and then I done fucked up. What happened was, Ben got really cuddly and managed to get a kiss off me. Tom saw this and left in a rage, slammed the door and, and stormed off. I felt like absolute shit, so I went home. Meanwhile, Tom was lighting up my phone with drunk, angry texts. I calmly told him I didn't realize he remembered or cared about the other night. A couple of weeks later, Tom sent me an apology about going off, and I apologized for being a cunt and kissing someone else, and we went back to talking about random shit. 
I had a choice to make. Ben had gotten flirty and Tom was warming up to me again. I think he's not uh, a reveal how he feels guy. Obviously not. Both guys had invited me over invited me over to hang out. I hit up a group chat for opinions. They said basically it was up to me which did not help. <laughs> I mean, how does that not help? I mean, that's kind of my advice at this point. I'm like, yeah, I mean, there's two guys who want to fuck you, so just pick one. What what do you want? No, I would much rather in this situation where I could fuck one guy or fuck the other guy, I would really appreciate if if I had no choice. I'm sorry. Uh, but that's rape. <laughs> that's not going to be my advice. I'm not going to be like, hey, if you don't fuck Tom, I'm going to come over there and kick your head in. Uh, that's not this kind of podcast. I don't know what you were, what you were asking, what you were expecting, but uh, I am more of a free choice kind of guy on this potty. Um, I hit up a group chat. They said it was up to me, which didn't help. And I ended up going to Ben's and we fucked. Well, surprise, surprise, you went for the guy who actually was open with his feelings and about wanting to have sex with you. Yeah, that makes sense. Gee, who should I have sex with? The guy who doesn't tell me he likes me or the guy who wants to fuck me? (laughs) I wonder what the decision is. Tom's fucked up here. You're not a whore. Um... Then we discussed it and started to date, which completely alienated Tom because I found out they're best friends. Oh, okay. So you are stuck in the middle of a dog cunt friendship. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, dude, you're not a whore. Fucking this Ben guy is a shit mate. We've since broken up. We didn't have nearly as much in common as first thought, and it was, as far as I'm aware, mutual. But we still talk because he's cool, but still not much in common. And I found out... I found out the ex he had vented about was someone I went to school with. Made it weird for me. I don't know why. Look, I don't know why you included that in that email. (laughs) That's fucking irrelevant information. Now I'm wondering if I should pursue a friendship or possible relationship with Tom, who has recently started talking to me more, or leave all of that alone because I've already fucked up. It's been about two months since we got out of our two-week relationship. Cheers, can't have a shit one. Yeah, look, Lexa, uh, you're not a whore. I mean, I'm really struggling to say, and this sentence sounds weird. Lexa, you're not a whore. That just sounds like, what really sounds like is, what sounds more fitting, like, Lexa, I'll give you 20 bucks for a blowy. That sounds that sounds more like it fits than Lexa, you're not a whore. Not because you are a whore, you just have a whore's name. <laughs> it's very different. Oh, man, I'm fairly confident that, she, that Lexa is a fake name. She said, call me Lexa. But if it is your real name, Lexa, I sincerely apologize that your mother gave you a whore's name. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, look. Like, so you're not a whore. That still sounds weird. No, you're not. Yeah, um... Uh... Sound... Just sounds like... Uh... I don't know. I think you're just... Yeah, you're just stuck in the middle of a shitty friendship. This isn't really your fault. I think that, uh... Ben... Has just seen his mate get in with a girl who I presume is attractive. And being like, oh... I want to fuck her too. I'm going to dog my mate and take advantage of uh, my friend being asleep. And while he's asleep, I'll just hit on her as much as possible. That sucks. That's just shitty friendship behavior, man. Uh, Lexa, yeah, you're not a whore. It sounds like, you know what? It sounds like Ben uh, has just seen Tom have sex with you and then done like the five-year-old thing where, you know, where they're not playing with the toy and then you pick it up and start having fun with it, and then they go, eh, "I want it. I was gonna do. I was gonna use that." Not that you're a. Uh, it sounds like you're a fucking object. Not that you're. Not that you're a toy for toddlers to use. You know what I mean? Ben has seen something that he probably shouldn't have gotten involved with, and he saw someone else enjoying enjoying their time with another person, and was like, "Fuck, I want. I want that as well." And then he 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 was with you. And then was like, oh, yeah, fuck, maybe I actually didn't like this girl. I just I just liked her because my friend liked her, and I'm a shit cunt. So, yeah, um, sounds like Ben's just an asshole. I mean, 
in terms of of pursuing a friendship or relationship with Tom, <clears throat> I would uh, I would leave it alone because <clears throat> if Tom is still friends with Ben, do you really want to date Tom? Because if they're still friends, Ben's going to come around to Tom's house. And there's just going to be this weird tension of, oh, we've both had sex with the same girl. And now I'm dating her after you dated her. Fuck, I wonder if his dick's bigger than mine. <laughs> that's what that's, that's going to be in the air. And then you don't want to be at like a, at like hanging out somewhere with, at a party and both of them are there. That's just awkward as I would, I would leave. You know what? Ben is a cunt who dogged his friend and Tom missed it. Uh, Tom had his chance and he didn't, he didn't chase you up. So fuck him. Yeah. I would just, uh, don't worry about thinking that you're a whore. I don't think you're a whore. I just think you're a sexually active woman. Doesn't sound like you're fucking everyone and their neighbor. So yeah, I would just, uh, continue on life as normal and stop fucking these two guys. Cause, uh, sounds like they can't have sex with a girl without the other one trying to jump in on it. I mean, maybe you could organize a spit roast. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Look, that's my advice. Either organize a spit roast or dump the both of them, all right? That's my advice. On You can quote me here. Two dicks are better than one. Lewis Spears, 2017. Uh, Spitty Sundays. That's the that's the new name of the podcast, guys. All right, I'm gonna end it there. You've been listening to Spitty Sundays. Um, I'll talk to you next Sunday. Sorry, this one got a little bit fucking depressing in the middle. Um, but I needed to let you know what was going on in my life. That's why I haven't been posting on anything. That's why I haven't done any videos, and I missed a podcast just because uh, there hasn't been very much funny in my life. Um, I'm going to try and get through Christmas and uh, I'm going to try my fucking best to make it enjoyable for the family despite the circumstances. I'm probably going to have a weird Christmas, but I hope you guys all have a wonderful one. I will talk to you next Sunday. Um, and yeah, a lot of people have been sending in a lot of, uh, edits and, uh, remixes and fan art for episode 100 of the podcast. Keep that shit coming. Keep putting it in the group. I'm loving looking at it and uh, I'm going to do something with it. Keep sending it to me. Um, because, uh, yeah, I need some more shit. So yeah, thank you very much for listening. I'll talk to you next Sunday. Enjoy your spit roast and have a shit one. No, 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 wait, wait, have a spit one. <laughs> See ya.